So, uh, Module 23, Cognition and Pharmacology for Alzheimer's and Cognitive Function, your Schizophrenia. Just a picture of your normal cholinergic transmission. Remember, your cholinergic is your parasympathetic with your acetylcholine and your nicotinic receptors. Um, just this is where your medications are going to be working. Alzheimer's disease is de degeneration of the cholinergic neuron in the deficiency of acetylcholine, which is in the parasympathetic nervous system. You have these plaques and you have the neurofibrillity tangles. So acetylcholinesterase or cholinesterase inhibitors. So acetylcholinesterase is an enzyme responsible for the breakdown of acetylcholine. So if Alzheimer's is this deficit, you want to stop that breakdown of acetylcholine. So you have acetylcholinesterase or cholinesterase inhibitors. Denepazil or aricept, ribostagmine, I cannot say the exelon. Um, this is a common one. Either of these names or acetylcholinase inhibitors. The breakdown, the break, prevent the breakdown of your acetylcholine. Comes in tablets or dissolving tablet. Because uh, and then the ribostagmine comes in a capsule or a patch in an oral solution. So your denepazil it's okay with the dissolving tablet, but if they reach that point where they cannot swallow whatsoever, that's when this ribostagmine comes in handy because it's in a patch. You caution with peptic ulcer, asthma, COPD, urinary obstruction, seizure disorder, car cardiac conduction disorder. Because if you're thinking of your parasympathetic nervous system, you might want to look back at your pictures of your cholinesterase side of it, and if you're blocking that. Um, can't see, can't pee, can't eat side of your nervous system. Okay, so your side effects, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, dizziness, anorexia, bradycardia. A big risk is cholinergic crisis, which I have on the next page. Cholinergic crisis because they have too much available to them. So this nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache is because everything is is active. Oh, yeah. So, you know, when they can't see, can't pee, can't eat, it's the opposite of you have too much fluid. Antidote is atropine IV. Here's your cholinergic crisis. Um, bag the puddles because they're going to sweat too much. Pupillary constriction instead of dilation. They're going to pee like crazy instead of they can't pee. Diaphoresis defecation, their poop is loose, lacrimation, which is your tears, emesis, seizures, bronchoconstriction, because it's the opposite of your sympathetic side. Um, denepazil take with or without food, ristagamine take with breakfast and dinner, or unless it's the patch that you're going to use there. Okay, NMDA receptor antagonist, the mantine I remember when the Mantine came out, it was just this incredible wonder drug. Blocks the glutamine receptor, caution renal impairment, severe hepatic impairment, cardiovascular disease, and seizure disorder. Side effects are dizziness, headache, confusion, constipation, hypertension, and cough. Daily tablet capsule or liquid. No significant adverse effects have been reported. Okay, that's it for those. And then your antipsychotics. You have atypical antipsychotics: risperidone, olanzapine, aripiprazole, and quetiapine or Seroquel. This is the, all. All of these have been commonly prescribed. Recognize these names. Used for schizophrenia, bipolar, autism, and an adjunct in. Um, major depressive disorder, blocks certain receptors, mostly the serotonin in the brain. Atypical antipsychotics, some major side effects, agitation, anxiety, constipation, extrapyramidal 
reactions, nausea, rhinitis, which is the runny, watery nose, and weight gain, definite weight gain. Contraindications, elderly with dementia-related psychosis have an increased risk of death. And this extra perimeter is, is a huge issue with um, antipsychotics, and I have a slide we'll talk about that. Some typical antipsychotics, which were the first antipsychotics came out, were haldoperidol and chlorpomerazine. Um, Haldol and thorazine. We used to call them vitamin H and vitamin T when somebody was so incredibly wild and combative and disoriented and hallucinating that we would give this IM injection. I still think they're using haldoperidol in the nursing homes, but it's not nearly as much as it used to be used because they're like the atypical antipsychotics a little better, but the typical antipsychotics are still used with schizophrenia and Tourette's because it blocks the dopamine side effects, tachycardia, blurred vision, weight gain. Big thing with the leukopenia and neutropenia. So if they've got leukopenia and neutropenia as a possible side effect, you're going to monitor what? Their CBC. They're, because you're looking at the white blood cells and, and, and your leukocytes and neutrophils as part of your WBC. Typical antipsychotics, adverse effects, tardive dyskinesia, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, hyperkinesia, uh, where their sensation is, is revved up, and neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Now remember, tardive dyskinesia for your typicals and your and your um, extraperimeral symptoms with your atypicals, and I'm going to distinguish those. Also talk about what is a neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Contraindicated in pregnancy, drug reaction with lithium can cause a lithium toxicity. This is your typical antipsychotic, haldoperidol, and of oh, crap, thorazine, whatever the can't think of the other name for thorazine because I always call it thorazine. Your chlorpromazine. Okay. So, extraperimeral symptoms. This is a really good picture here. Acute dystonia, Parkinsonism, akathisia, tardive and tardive dyskinesia can be part of extraperimeral symptoms. So, acute dystonia, spasm of the tongue, neck, face, and back. That's dystonia. Parkinsonism, it looks like Parkinson's, so it's tremor, shuffling gait, drooling, stoop posture, instability. I don't remember if, no, you don't cover Parkinson's in MedSearch 1. Maybe it's MedSearch 2, but in Parkinson's you will learn that Parkinson's, you, um, they get it because of the problem with their dopamine. So if you're blocking the dopamine, you're going to have symptoms look like Parkinson's. Akathisia, compulsive, repetitive motion agitation. And tardive dyskinesia, lip smacking, worm-like tongue movement, fly catching. And I have another slide on this. And look at your onset. Tardive dyskinesia can be months to years before the onset. Acute dystonia is the only one that happens very rapidly. This can be 30 days, this can be 60 days, and this can be months to years. I had a, a patient years ago as a provider and a drug addict. She wanted so badly to get off, she kept relapsing. Eventually she got into treatment, she was successful. She ended up on um, typical antipsychotics, the haldoperidol, to manage her. And she had both the acute dystonia, the akathisia, and the tardive dyskinesia. And she said, I refuse to get off the drugs because I'm not, I'm, I'm, I mean, I refuse to take these because I'm not going to go back to the life I had. And she lived with, with these symptoms. Here you go, tardive dyskinesia, movement of the mouth, rapid movement of the body, face, eyes, difficulty breathing, difficulty swallowing, difficulty speaking. So for testing purposes, I would focus on this slide over here, be able to distinguish between them. And, and this is a good description for your tardive dyskinesia. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome. 
Malignant hypothermia is something that you will encounter in learning about OR drugs. Which again, I think, I don't know. I don't think we touch on it this semester anyway. Um, malignant hyperthermia is something that happens with your anesthetic drugs versus neuroleptic malignant syndrome, which is from antipsychotics and anti these two antiemetics. And a copramide, which is reglan, promethazine, which is phenergan, um, but most all of your antipsychotics, whether they're typical or atypical. They have altered mental status, muscle rigidity, hyperthermia greater than 40 degrees. 40 degrees Celsius is 104 degrees, so, so it's significant hyperthermia, pulse and respiratory rate increase. They treat with a benzodiazepine, which is your uh, diazepam, which is Valium, clonazepam, which is your clonopin, um, what's another benzo? Mm -hmm. Can't think of it right now. And uh, dantrolene, which is a drug that's really used for your malignant hyperthermia. I'm, I'm confused here. I'm sorry, I'm reading this wrong. I'm like, wait a minute, no. Dantrolene is for ligament hypothermia. Sorry. Back up. Go over here. So your neuroleptic malignant syndrome is treated with bromocryptine, which I've never had to do, thank goodness. Increases the dopamine level by um, dopamine agonist. Because these lower your dopamine level and then this will increase it. So that is the end of this recording.